And then the last of the, or the most new, of the newest technologies that's really commercially available, there's a couple of other sequencing technologies that I'm not going to tell you about, um, mainly because they're vaporware. They never materialized helioscope. Um, there's, uh, there's also another technology where um, we don't actually know how it works, and there's lots of rumors about precisely how it works, but there's no real papers describing it. So the last of the technologies that I want to tell you about is what's called the Oxford Nanopore Minion. And this is cool technology because what they, the way that this sequencing works, instead of taking a piece of DNA and fixing it, um, instead of taking DNA polymerase and synthesizing DNA, you create a membrane And you insert into the membrane, in fact, you don't really have to do anything because the molecules will insert themselves, but you insert into the membrane um, a molecule that I probably can't draw, but it has a hole in the middle and is called a pore. Okay. So pores are really common in biology. All of our cells have pores. We use them to move things in and out. We've got to move in glucose. When you eat a pizza, You've got to get that pizza into your body. You do that through breaking it down and then transporting the glucose molecules in. Right? There's lots of different pores. Pores do different things. They move in glucose, they move in nitrogen, they move things out like hydrogen. And there's a set of pores that will actually move DNA through them, like this. And so, as this sequencing technology suggests, they use a pore to do the sequencing. And the way they detect which base is going through is by measuring the current or the resistance across this membrane. It turns out that each of the four bases have a slightly different size. And as this, the bases are going through this pore, the resistance or the, the amount of current that flows through changes um, as each base goes across. When you do uh, nanopore sequencing, you get kind of a noisy signal of uh, current, and then it changes depending on the base that comes across. And so one of the interesting computational challenges is taking nanopore data and developing better base calling techniques um, based off of this analyzing this waveform um, approach. So the advantage of the nanopore sequencing is you can get really long reads. And so um, I did a bunch of nanopore sequencing over the summer, and I got reads up to in the range of 50 to 100 um, kilobases. Okay. So really long reads. And the technology is pretty cheap. So it's uh, somewhere in the region of about $750 um, for one sequencing run, and that generates um, in the order of gigabyte, gigabytes of data. So it's cheap. It's, it's, uh, the protocols to use it are pretty quick, pretty simple. The problem, again, with nanopore sequencing, because you're analyzing this waveform, is that it has a relatively high error rate. And so in the sequencing that I did over the summer, um, individual reads had about 93% accuracy. So about a 7% error rate. However, if I took two or three or four reads and combine them together, then I get essentially 100% accuracy. The other approach that Nanopore has is that you can just run one DNA molecule through, or you can run your DNA molecule through once. You can also take your DNA molecule and add what they call a little hairpin linker. Um, and of course, well, we haven't talked about this, but DNA is double-stranded. So you run one molecule through, through the hairpin linker, and run back through down the other strand, and sequence both strands of DNA, and you can use that for improved error correction.